So right now we are going to invite architect Hassan Adi for worship for his Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hassan Anifoshe. I'm glad to be here again. So, okay, I have stage fright, but that's not so true. <laughs> I'll be teaching you some few uh, things today, and I'll also tell you my experience in getting to where I am. So, two things. The first, my experience in getting to where I am. The second, the secrets of selling. Uh, how many students do we have here? Raise your hands, please. Uh, OK, we have quite a number. How many people have jobs here? Employed people? Raise your hands. Oh, you're the lucky, you're the lucky ones. How many people are CEOs? OK, you're the hustlers, <laughs> AKA entrepreneurs. OK, so uh, I think we have quite a good number. And I'll be talking to the right audience. So I'll uh, be speaking about becoming Superman salesman. And uh, of course, we know who Superman is. Yeah. And salesman, all of us are salesmen. Can I prove you right? If you have a boyfriend, your market is good. <laughs> <laughs> you have a girlfriend, something about you. You're married, good job, you made it. <laughs> so, being a salesman means that you have something that someone else wants, right? And out of 7 billion people in this world, there's someone who deems it fit to buy your market. Congratulations. So, I'm going to teach you the art of selling today. So, let's get going. So, first slide, August 2010. The U.S. was fighting Afghanistan, all the planes and the bombs and the ammo tanks and everything. But guess what? I got fired. Yeah. The rest of the world had its own event. I had my own event. And there is a popular saying that says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So we all had a plan, right? Before Creative Architects, we all you know, wanted the big, beautiful, baddest places in Abuja. We actually went to the International Conference Center until we had some millions and millions. And we said, oh, we got to scale down. So you always, have, you always feel everything is fine for you until you get punched in the mouth. So you have a job. You're like, OK, this is what I'm going to do for the next five years. And then you lose the job. And then you're going to have to start thinking. So you better start thinking now before you lose your job. Right? Because if you're a salesman, there is a high probability that you own the job. Everybody believes me? You know why? Because you're bringing in the money. And nobody sells the cow that gives you the milk. So, so I got fired, and then everything started. Now, when I got fired, one month, I was at home, very hungry. We were so broke, we couldn't even buy fuel in the generator. Now, when I got back home with my uh, sack letter, and I showed my brother, and I said, you're the only person Who's going to see this later? Mind you, it was jobless too. <laughs> so that was two of us. And guess what? We were hungry. Like, we're so broke, we couldn't buy fuel in the generator that our uncle dashed us. <laughs> that bad, OK? Yeah, but look at where we are today, right? So when you get punched in the mouth, you have to stay hungry. Because the gods will offer you chances. The gods will offer you chances. Know them and take them. Opportunities come like a boss, they say. You lose one, you get another. But guess what you don't know? How long will it take the next boss to come? So take it. Take the opportunity. So this is the opportunity I took, and that's how we got here, where we got to today. So I was in Abuja, September 2010. I was here with my friend on his bed in his house. His name is Tayo. Please raise your hand. Please say thank you to him. He's a very good friend. We started the hustle on his dining table. 
Yeah. We, we, we thought we were there, right? So, I got a phone call that says, are you in Lagos? I said, yes, I'm in Lagos. Yeah, because I was hungry. <laughs> and then they said, we need you to come to the office by 12 o'clock. I said, um, okay, can you make it 4 o'clock? They said, 4 o'clock, deal. I was in Abuja. I wasn't even planning to go to Lagos. So I said, you know what? Let's do this. So I went for a meeting, took the cab back to the house, picked up my bag and got to the airport. Fired up my laptop, started looking for flights. I mean, who gets to the airport and starts looking for flights? You're never gonna see. Then I got the most expensive ticket I've ever bought in my history till date. <laughs> most expensive. I had to empty my account to get on the plane. I was the second to the last person who got on the plane. And as I stepped in, some guy followed me and then they shut the door. That was the longest flight ever. It was like five hours to Lagos. So we got to Lagos, I got from the airport, took a bike, Maryland, CMS, bus, everything. I was in a BRT like this. <laughs> Nobody knew where I was going. I was like, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. Yeah, because I was hungry. So I walked in, threw my bag in the security man's house and I said, I'll be back. Did my shirt, you know, 007, walked inside, made the presentation and I got the job. Biggest break ever, please clap for me. We became so rich. We became so rich that we bought a generator. <laughs> that was how much money we made from the project. We bought a small generator, 18,000 naira. <laughs> but we didn't stop there. So we kept being hungry, kept going for the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing without relenting. Now, while we were in the process, I decided to take a study, personal study. So I'm sharing this secret with you today, and you better be writing. I went around to look at the biggest brands in the world, the Nikes, the Googles, the Coca-Colas, the, the uh, Yahoo's, the Mastercard, Samsung, that everybody knows. And I said, I need to find out what these people are doing that makes their brands strong. And guess what I found? They all have the dreams. All of us have dreams. Yeah, actually some of our dreams have turned to nightmares. But then, all of us have dreams. You have the dream, you want to be the biggest, the baddest, the biggest shoemaker, you want to be the best interior designer in Nigeria, you want to be, Avant God said you want to be the architect, you know, in Nigeria and go beyond Africa. Yes, it's possible. But guess what you have to do? You have to build value. And it takes time. You don't become the best person on day one. Actually, no. You don't, you don't get on the stage and talk to 800 people and they listen to you on day one. No. So you have to build value in yourself, in the brand, over time. And the final secret is they sell. They sell and they sell again and they sell again. So everybody here has a smartphone, right? How many people use Samsung? Okay, I know you probably don't want to raise your hand because you don't want us to know you use a good phone. But I can tell you, everybody here has probably gone back to the phone store to buy the same brand, not, not the same brand now, the same manufacturer, but a better phone. Am I correct? So you bought a Samsung before. Now you're going back to the phone store and you still want a Samsung. Do you know why? Because they keep selling to you. And that's how they stay relevant. Because today you see the billboard, it says Samsung, blah, 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 fingerprint. In the next month you see Samsung, blah, 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 high risk scanner, because they build value with time and they sell and they sell and they sell again. So let's go through what I got to get here. So I knew, of course, in order to be able to sell, I have to become Superman first. And becoming Superman, becoming Superwoman, means that you have to be so many things at the same time. So you're a designer, you're an architect, you're your own accountant, you're your own HR, you're hiring people, you're your own admin, you're keeping your record straight, you're your own team lead. When you have one person, I hired my assistant from a filling station. I, I, I needed someone so bad that I got in 
and I wasn't rich enough to put an advert on jobs.com.ng or something. Then I walked into a, a bakery in a filling station and I told, told the attendants and I said, I need an assistant. Anyone here needs a job? I'll pay them. And they said, okay, drop your phone number. We'll tell someone to tell someone to tell someone. Then I wrote my phone number. Then I walked out. Just as I was about to get back to my car, a young man ran after me. Guess what the man did? He sold himself to me. He's a salesman. He came after me and he said, sir, I just heard you talking to someone. I can be your assistant. I can do this. I can do that. I don't have a university degree, but I can do this and I can do that. And I'm saying, young man, see me tomorrow. And he showed up. Until date, he's still with us. Please clap for that guy. You know what we call him in the office? Chief Happiness Officer. Yeah, because when we work so hard, he helps us all get things done that we don't want to do because we're busy. So he's our chief happiness officer. So you have to be your team lead, you have to hire your own people, you have to be a programmer, you have to be a student because you keep learning, you have to be a student, if you're a husband, your wife, you have to be fearless, tireless, and not average. Become Superman, become Superwoman. Then you're ready to become salesman. Now, this is where you get to write. So who you must become is someone who makes money. Someone who makes money. They say sales kills everything. You've seen a hungry couple before. The, the wife is hungry because the husband, you know, the husband is hungry because the wife. Put 10 million between them. They will start talking. How do we spend this money? You find an office where everyone is struggling and unhappy. Throw 20 million between them. Everybody will show up at 7 a.m. Yeah. Sales kills everything. If you make money, you'll be all right. Okay? So, I'm going to teach you the BAF approach. And the BAF approach is a world standard, but not a lot of people will know it. And that's why you're better off than the people who are not in this place today. By the time you go back, you have more knowledge than them. So, the BAF approach is the benefits, advantages, and features. So don't, don't walk into a place and say, hello, my name is this, I am this, I am that, I can do this, and then you go all and on and on about yourself. I can give you two minutes, the guy's going to say, you know what, drop your phone about, I'll get back to you, and they never call you back. It happened to a lot of us, right? When, in fact, the moment you hear, we'll get back to you. You better move to the next guy, because you probably didn't lock in that sale, right? Now. The BAF approach is broken down into these segments. Emotion, the benefits first. Benefits, what you stand to gain. And why you're listening to me now is because you know that there is something in here for you. Am I correct? You know there's something in here for you. It's not me, it's not about me. There's something in here you have to learn, you're gonna use when you go out. That's the benefit. So the person you're selling to needs to know that there is something in this for him. We've all been in motor parks. So you're traveling and you're in a bus waiting for it to get filled and someone comes to you. Two, two salespeople come to you. The first one says, uh, brother, auntie, ah, I they sell vitamin C, oh, uh, you will just buy vitamin C. You just be like, later. Am I correct? And the other guy comes and he says, Hey, chief, ah, I they sell vitamin C, oh. You know that this vitamin C, eh, as they travel now, four hours for road, you know, say your body will tire. You need enough energy to continue the activities where you won't do, okay? So now, every day, you must get 10 milligrams of vitamin C for your body to the day, kakaraka. Now, after that, after you take vitamin C, you see all those successful people outside, they, they take vitamin C. I get vitamin C, okay, you go buy. <laughs> now tell me who sells. It's the other guy. It's the other guy because he's made you see the benefits and the advantages. Those super people outside are taking vitamin C and you're like, hmm, I want to be like them. And then the features. I sell vitamin C. Do you want to buy your soul? Right? So the emotions first. People need to feel or people, people have to need what you have to offer. So pick that need from them. I have a colleague that says, if you meet a client that doesn't have a problem, 
create a problem and solve it. They'll pay you. Yeah, you have to make them need what you have to offer. Okay, now. Going to emotions, helping, not selling. You just don't want to sell. If you just want to sell because you want to meet the bottom line, because your office says, go out there and make 10 million naira. If you don't make 10 million naira, you're not going to have a job. What happens eventually is people go out desperate and they just want to sell, 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 but then they still come back and fail. But when you go with the approach of helping your recipient, helping your client, helping your customers, helping them to set the lighting in their house, helping them to set their furniture because they're too busy, they don't have time, you're sacrificing your time, they will pay you for that time. Okay, now let's go to advantage logic. A lot of people who think, a lot of people who reason, they want to see the reason why they should buy. Why, why should I buy? Now, you have to prove it to them. So, 2009, I was in GT Bank. I was a bloody copper. I didn't know anything about sales. And they dropped me in CBG. CBG was the team that handles the corporate banking group. You know, all the big Dangote refineries and stuff. Then I didn't know anything. And then I said, are you going to train me? They said, yeah, we're going to train you. And then the next day, get the kind of training I got. They threw me in the streets. So I'm going to meet the Igbo guy whose container has just landed. Who wants to make all the money he wants to make? And then he asks, young man, do you, do you guys do TT? And I'm like, what is TT? Um, he says, okay, you can talk to your uh, superiors. I guess uh, we can have this conversation later. Guess what? I lost the sale. Why? Because know, know your product. Know your product. You have to know what you're selling before you can sell it. If you don't know it, well, by the time they ask you two questions, they know you don't know what you're selling, then they're gonna say, ah, oh, we'll get back to you. And guess what? You lost the sale. So know your product and know the advantages over the others, okay? Now start talking about the features of your product. Put logic in it and says, that says differentiate them from the competition. Showcase. So uh, a typical interior design company will tell you where interior designers will design your space. Well, guess what? We also have a product that you want. They're most likely going to sell to the client more than a company that just comes to say where interior designers hire us. Because they are making the client see that they are different from what are adopts out there. What you have to offer is different from what everybody else offers. So if you're selling German doors, that are bulletproof and everything. You don't just end up saying, we sell doors, come and buy. Talk about the advantages of buying your door and not the other guy's door, right? So you have to know your competition and you have to differentiate your points. So drop it like it's all. Confidence, pitch execution. When you walk into your presentation, they see you. They feed off your energy. If you're super, Super. If you're average, you're average. If you're just there, you're just there. So master your pitch and execute it. Now I have a, so don't forget your USP, your unique selling point is that thing that differentiates you from everybody. Now I'll give a typical example. You enter a lift in uh, a 12 floor hotel and you're with Dangote in the lift. You have one minute before the elevator goes ding and then it walks and it says bye bye young man. What are you going to tell him? One minute. What are you going to tell Dan Gote? What? How to make money. Okay, anyone else? How to make money? You're, you're not, you're not, you don't, you're not telling Dan Gote that he needs you. So, he probably won't sell. Who's going to tell, what are you going to tell Dan Gote? What? Okay, okay, I'm not sure I'm getting all that. But you guys have the idea, okay? Okay, good. Make Dan Gote feel that he needs you. And guess what? He's going to say, young man, take my card. Call me in two weeks time. And you made the sale. You open the door and then, because your pitch is the benefit, he needs you. And this is what you have to offer and this is why you're different from the rest of the crowd. So, the close out is retaining your customer.
So you've made the sale. Why Samsung is not losing a lot of their customers today is because they are making more sales from them and they are retaining them. Apple is grabbing its customers, giving them the next features, giving them the next advantages and making sure that they keep the sale thing coming over and over again. Once you make the sale, don't lose the customer. Because they will, one customer will lead to three more, will lead to nine more, will lead to twelve more, and just like that. So keep your customer, sell to them again. Sell to them again. And one thing I've not talked about being a salesperson is that you get a lot of goals. So people will tell you, no. So people will tell you, I'll try to I'm sorry. It's not their fault because they don't need you. But if you let the no get to you, you will not make the next sale. So when you hear the no's, just take it like, it means someone kicked you and said, move to the next guy. And move. Not everybody in the world will need your service eventually. But the people that need it, find them. Take them. And always make sure that you're selling back to them. And the reward of being a salesperson is that salespeople, Make the best CEO.